Hello, hello lovely students welcome back to another exciting class today's class will be looking at a very interesting poem one of the most interesting non-african poetry that i know which is called bat by david herbert lawrence bat by david herbert lawrence behavioral objectives by the end of the lesson we should be understanding the background of the poet and the background of the poem the subject matter or the summary of the poem, the poetic devices employed in the poem, as well as the use of imagery and symbolism in the poem. Now, the background of the poet. David Herbert Lawrence was born on 11 September 1885 in Eastwood, Nottinghamshire in England. He was the fourth child of Arthur Lawrence and Lydia Birdsall. His father was a minor while his mother was a member of the higher social class. Lawrence attended Nottingham University College in 1906, died on the 2nd of March 1930 at Vernis in, his, in the south of France. Now, David H. Lawrence was a poet, a novelist, a playwright, an essayist, and also a critic. So you can imagine his own genres of literature. He wrote poems, novels, short stories, plays, essays, and even critics. He was a legendary and prolific writer. Now, let's move on to the poetry analysis itself. We will be analyzing the poem. Now, I will be reading the poem Bat by D.H. Lawrence. An evening, sitting on this terrace, when the sun from the west, beyond Pisa, beyond the mountains of Carrara, departs and the world is taken by surprise. When the tired flower of Florence is in gloom beneath the glowing brown hills surrounding. When under the arches of the Ponte Vecchio, a green light enters against stream flush from the west against the current of obscure Arno. Look up and you see things flying between the day and the night, swallows with spools of dark tread sewing the shadows together. A circle swoop and a quick parabola under the bridge arches where light pushes through a sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the air a deep to the water and you think the swallows are flying so late swallows dark air life looping yet missing the pure loop a twitch a twitter an elastic shudder in flight and serrated wings against the sky like a glow, a black glow thrown up at the light and falling back. Never swallows, but the swallows are gone. At a wavering instant, the swallows gave way to bats by the Ponte Vecchio, changing guard. Bats in an uneasy creeping in one scalp as the bats swoop overhead, flying madly. Pipistrello, black piper on an infinitesimal pipe. Little lumps that fly in air and have voices indefinite, wildly vindictive, wings like bits of umbrella. Bats, creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag, to sleep and disgustingly upside down, hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old rags and grinning in their sleep. Bats. In China, the bat is symbol for happiness, not for me. There you have it, lovely students. You've heard the poem Bat by D.H. Lawrence. Now we'll be analyzing the poem itself. The poem is a dra dramatic monologue. The poem is a dramatic monologue. The poet is speaking his thoughts to passive listeners. He's talking to 
the audience he's talking to everybody the poet is happily describing the sun that is setting in his neighborhood and from the from the descriptions he gave us so far you will discover that he is in italy florence to be precise and he's enjoying the setting of the sun in his neighborhood the plants and flowers look very tired and gloomy after a long day under the bright sun which is now going down but here is the contrast unlike the flowers the surrounding hills still look very bright and lively because they are glowing against the falling sun's golden rays now you can imagine the sun is setting in the west when the sun is setting the east will have a dull look but the west will have a very beautiful look because the rays of the golden sun that is setting will be reflecting on the flowers and the mountains and hills over there so that's the beauty of the surrounding hills in the west the poet suddenly asks us to look up after admiring nature he decides to look up into the sky he wants us to see the things that are flying up there in the sky he's believing oh okay birds that are flying it's almost um night and they'll be sleeping very soon but they are enjoying themselves flying high in the sky at this stage the poet says that the flying things must be birds swallows in fact how come swallows are flying so late he knows that swallows don't fly very very late once it's 4 p.m 3 4 p.m swallows have gone to their nests to prepare for another day but all of a sudden the persona realizes that it's not natural swallows are not nocturnal animals now when i say nocturnal these are nocturnal animals are animals that sleep during the day but are very very active at night so he knows that <laughs> swallows are not nocturnal animals so it's something else that is up there they don't fly this late they are dark in appearance swallows are not dark you can see a little bit of color on their bodies but the, the creatures flying in the sky at that moment are they are dark in appearance and they lack that pure loop of the swallows he previously thought they were the reality of everything sets in and he be, he discovers that oh my god the birds up there that i thought were swallows were not swallows but bats and then you will notice a change in his attitude it now changes from one of praise from one of admiration to one of intense hostility and contempt like the hatred is, is coming off him in waves clearly the beauty and brightness of what he saw up there is gone the poet's early admiration is now replaced with revulsion like he's he's repulsed he's irritated he's he's angry he describes bats as evil unnatural unsightly and dangerous he also stated that bats bring him misery and that he will not have anything to do with them he doesn't believe that bats are lovely creatures like in the poem when he said in china in china bats are symbols of happiness but <laughs> he's telling everybody that china may see bats as symbols of happiness but to me they are not they are symbols of doom danger and uh, and impurity that's 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 the description of bats yeah so that's the summary of the poem loving nature admiring nature admiring the swallows and then coming to discover that the swallows were actually bats there we see the poets change from admiration to hostility yeah so we've done the summary of the poem bats by dh lawrence we're moving to the poetic devices the poetic devices in the poem the first one is the language we will always analyze the language of the poet Lawrence uses violent words or expressions to express his hatred for the bats. He, he made sure the, the listeners knew the extent of his hatred for bats. Words like flying madly, voices indefinite, widely vindictive, old rags, disgusting, black piper. You see, these are words that 
negative words, strong violent words he's using to describe bats. The use of black here also connotes devil or evil. Disgusting means something bad, unfair, inappropriate that will make you feel really annoyed and angry. So you can see the extent of his hatred for bats through the words in his poem. Now let's look at the figures of speech in Lawrence's poem, Bat. The first figure of speech is Oxymoron. Ponte Vecchio is a medieval stone age segmental arc bridge over the Arno River in Florence, Italy. Another way is Mountain Carrara. Carrara marble is a type of white or blue gray marble of high quality, popularly for use in sculpture and building decorations. We also have another figure of speech, antithesis. Bats are the symbol of happiness and good fortune in China, but the poet sees bats as disgusting and ill omen creatures. So you're seeing the antithesis there. There is a, there is a um, distinction there. There is a like and dislike being placed together. A country sees something as good, but you, you don't even, you don't even see it as bad. You see it as disgusting. So that's the antithesis in that statement in the poem. Another figure of speech is personification. When the tired flower of Florence, line five, flowers can never get tired like human beings. Flowers can never get tired like human beings. Another one is bats behave like an insane person in being flying madly. Flying madly, lines 33. We also see lines 11 where the poet is telling us that swallows behave like tailors when they are sewing the shadows together. Swallows can't sew. So if you're giving them a human attribute, that is a figure of speech called personification. Another figure of speech is simile. The poet compared the ugly appearance of bats with an umbrella wings like bits of umbrella others are creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag like a globe a black globe thrown up at night you see all these descriptions show us the poet's hatred for the creature bat so the, that's the figure of speech and now we'll be looking at the use of imagery in the poem we can see the image of the way the bats fly. The poet vividly described the flying pattern of the bats. How they sleep, sleeping upside down. How their wings are like stretched umbrella. So the poet created an image of all these in the poem. We now also see the use of symbolism. There are so many symbols in D.H. Lawrence's bats. We have day slash light, which stands for the beauty and the glory of the years that have gone by. The night, evening, or darkness represents the dark days of the modern industrial age. The swallows stand for the happy past, while the bats symbolize the unnatural and the ugly. They also symbolize negative change. Foreign Italian words, which stand for the alien way of life, that has unfortunately come to define life for the poet's generation. We also have the bridge and the umbrella. These are symbols of modernity and manufacturing, while the water, the sky, and the mountains are symbols of nature. Now we come to the end of our lovely class on an introduction to the poem Bats by D.H. Lawrence. We're moving to evaluation. Evaluation. Comments on the poet's use of the following figures of speech. Metaphor, alliteration, rhetorical question, and repetition. So I need you to do this and see what you can deduce from the poem. And we are ending our lovely class on the poem Bats by D.H. Lawrence. I'll see you in our next class where we'll be analyzing the themes and the style. Until then... Bye for now and I'll see you in our next class.